Yeah, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis. In the last lecture uh, we talked about uh, total synthesis of few triquinanes and we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of more triquinanes uh, today and uh, a few more lectures we will focus on the same. And today's lecture what we will do, we will take one key reaction and how this key reaction was used successfully to synthesize a few triquinanes. And that key reaction is radical cyclization. As you know, radicals can be easily generated from corresponding alkyl halides or nitroalkanes. So, one of the most common methods for generating radicals is take an alkyl halide and then treat with tributyl tin hydride and AABN. So, the AABN is nothing but aso bis isobutro nitrile. Okay. You take this compound and easily one can dehalogenate. Okay. If you have an alkyl halide, that halide can be replaced by hydrogen. And the mechanism is very simple. When you take an alkyl halide or nitroalkane in toluene or benzene, when you reflux it, okay, then you add this aso bis isobutro nitrile. So, if you look at the structure of aso bis isobutro nitrile, there is a nitrogen okay, N2 which is a good leaving group. So, easy extrusion is possible. So, this is what you observe when you do this reaction, when you take this halide in toluene or benzene and reflux it, then when you add this aso bis isobutro nitrile, immediately you can see the extrusion of nitrogen bubbles you know you can see nitrogen bubbling okay and that will generate this radical okay so this radical what will happen since you add tributyl tin hydride which is uh, one, 1 to 1.1 equivalent of tributyl tin hydride you add to this reaction mixture so that will immediately abstract the hydrogen of tributyl tin hydride and it will form the corresponding tributyl tin radical and already you can see the aso bis isobutro nitrile became simple butro nitrile. Now, the tributyl tin radical will react with your alkyl halide okay, and then form tributyl tin halide and alkyl radical. Okay, that alkyl radical will pick up hydrogen from tributyl tin hydride and then it form RH. So, now what will happen? This tributyl tin radical again it will pick up it will react with Rx to form alkyl radical. Okay, that alkyl radical will further undergo you know hydrogen abstraction from tributyl tin hydride. So, the cycle will continue. Okay. So, what you need is you need only a catalytic amount of azo bis isobutro nitrile. So, that is a radical initiator, okay. but you need more than one equivalent of tributyl tin hydride because that is what which re replaces the halide in your system. And when you use tributyl tin hydride, as I said, you can also remove nitro group. If you have a nitro group, the nitro group also can be cleaved. Instead, instead of nitro group, what you get in the product is hydrogen. Okay. In addition, what will happen when you have an alkyl halide and also an acceptor in the same system, okay, also an acceptor in the same system, then this radical instead of abstracting hydrogen from tributyl tin hydride, it can add to the acceptor, it can add to the double bond, it can add to the triple bond. So, when that happens, the radical will not be at this place. Okay. So, once the radical is generated here, then the radical adds to this double bond and it the radical comes to now the, the primary carbon of the double bond. Okay. At that position, that CH2 radical will abstract hydrogen from tributyl tin hydride. So, in the process, you can see if you start with an open chain, you end up in getting a ring. And this is the process. And when you do this, you also will see in many papers, people write like this notation. 5XO, 6XO and some number they will give and XO and endo and then they will give trig, 
dig and so on. And what are they? Exo you would see, endo you would see, dig, trig, ted. Dig means diagonal, trig means, trig represents trigonal, ted represents tetrahedral. So that means, so this is sp3 carbon, this is sp2 carbon, this is sp carbon. So these are the carbon atoms which are accepting the radical. If your acceptor has sp carbon atom, then you write D. If your acceptor has sp2 carbon atom, then you write trig. If your acceptor has sp3 carbon atom, then you write ted. Then what is exo, what is endo and also you will see some number in front of exo or endo. Okay. So what that number means? That number means when you do the cyclization, what is the ring size? The size of the ring is represented by n. Suppose if you are forming a 5 membered ring, then you write 5. If you are forming a 6 membered ring, then you write 6. If you are forming a 3 membered ring, then you write 3. Okay? So, the n represents the size of the ring formed after the cyclization. What is exo and endo? So, when the radical is formed, okay, when the radical is formed, now the radical adds to the double bond. It can add in two ways. First way, it adds like this and the final radical, the final radical that is after the cyclization, if it is outside the ring, if it is outside the ring, then the whole process is called exo. Okay. And same thing, when the cyclization takes place and the final radical, if it is part of the ring, it is inside the ring, then it is called endo. Okay. N represents the size of the ring form and exo means the final radical is outside the ring, endo means the final radical is inside the ring. Then the trig and then dig, as I said, since we are talking about radical cyclization and acceptor, we will talk about only sp and sp2 carbons. So this is sp2 carbon, is not it? The acceptor is sp2 carbon. So this means it is trig, exo trig. This is sp carbon. Okay, both are sp carbons, is not it? The acceptor has sp carbon atom. So then the cyclization you have to write d. Okay, depending on the ring size, you put the number before the exo. Okay, uh, this is what proposed uh, long time ago, and also Baldwin proposed a set of rules where which are the reactions allowed, which are not allowed based on the literature. Okay, so according to him. All exo trig, all exo trig reactions are allowed or favored. What is not favored is 3 endo, 4 endo, 5 endo. Okay. These are not favored in the case of trig, that is, if you have a double bond and if you are carrying out radical cyclization, then 3 endo, 4 endo, 5 endo are not favored. The first earliest ring where endo is favored is 6 endo, only 6 endo is favored. Okay. Now coming to sp carbon atoms, you have exactly opposite to what trig is, all endo dig reactions are favored, all endo dig reactions are favored, but 3 xo and 4 exo dig are not favored. Okay. Only from 5 exo dig onwards all exo dig reactions are favored. Okay. So these are rules which you can uh, remember or no problem when you carry out reactions automatically you will come to know whether react your reaction works or not. If it does not work then go back and then see why it did not work. It may be because of uh, these rules. But though these rules are uh, you know used extensively there are many exceptions as is the case with many rules. Okay. Then what about the VJ chemistry? So when exo and endo 
are allowed for the same substrate, which one will be favored? Okay, XO will be favored or endo will be favored. Then when your substrate has substituted after the radical cyclization, what will be the stereochemical relationship? So the regiochemistry and stereochemical outcome of radical cyclization can be easily explained. See for example, if you take this compound, now 5XO will give a tertiary radical, whereas 6-endo will give a primary radical. So from the stability point of view, you know the tertiary radical is more stable. So that is why this is more favored that is 5XO is more favored than 6-endo. Coming to the stereochemistry, see for example, you have a double bond and you have a halogen. So it forms 5XO trig okay, since you do not have substituent at the end, so 5XO trig is more favored. Now you put the substituent at the same carbon as the halide is. Okay. When the radical cyclization takes place, this will become a methyl group, is not it? This will become a methyl group. And what will be the stereochemical relationship between the R and methyl? What will be the stereochemical relationship between R and methyl? So, what you should do? You should draw a chair like conformation. See, this is a chair like conformation. And when you do that, you put the radical and also put the R group in the equatorial position of the chair conformation. So, you draw the chair conformation and put the R group in the equatorial position. Now, when you cyclize, when you cyclize, this is what you get. Okay. What you get? R and methyl are cis to each other. Now, the R group can be here here, here. Okay. What you should do accordingly you have to draw the chair conformation and then put the R group in the equatorial position accordingly. Okay. Accordingly you put the R group in the equatorial position then do the cyclization. Then you draw the cyclopentane and then look at the methyl group and your R group. So I will give one more example. So now what I have done? I just move the R group to second carbon and again you draw the same chair conformation and this R you put in equatorial position. Do the radical cyclization and as you can see here in this case the methyl and R are trans to each other. Okay. So these are the major products you also will get the other product. Okay. So in this case you will get uh, trans, in this case you will get cis also but okay, these are the major regio and stereochemical outcome. So, the regiochemical outcome is based on stability of the radical whereas the stereochemical outcome is based on putting the alkyl group or the substituent in equatorial position and drawing the chair like conformation and then see the final outcome. Okay. So, now we will see how this radical cyclization reaction has been successfully used in the total synthesis of natural products as we are talking about uh, triquinanes. I will explain how this particular radical cyclization has been used in the synthesis of linear, angular and propylenes. Okay. One example which we will see is uh, hirsutanes and hirsutane belongs to you know linear triquinane. So, this is one of the earliest uh, hirsutane type triquinanes which were isolated. It was isolated in 1976. I will not go into the details of this because there are four different types of linear triquinanes and this four different types vary based on the position of the four methyl groups. Okay. The four methyl groups you can see here, these four methyl groups are located in different places for these four different skeleton. Okay. The first natural product where a tandem radical cyclization was used as the key step was hirsutine. So this is a sesquiterpene called hirsutane 
and this molecule current has cleverly used a tandem phi xo radical cyclization as well as a Claisen rearrangement to prepare the starting material for the key radical cycling. This was one of the earliest examples of polyene radical cyclization. So once you see a double bond here, okay, then you also see three, three phi membered rings. So one can easily think about phi xo radical cyclization reaction. So what he thought was this could be easily made from this precursor. So the hirsutine can be easily made from this precursor. So his idea was this bromine on treatment with AABN and tributyl tin hydrate should generate a radical here. That radical should undergo first phi xo cyclization to give a radical here. Okay. So the phi membered ring is formed and this phi xo trig because this is sp2, this is sp2 is not it, so trigonal phi xo trig and then phi membered ring is formed that leads to another radical. Now you have an acceptor, this time it is a triple bond, so that means it is dig. So that will be phi xo dig, so it is a combination of phi xo trig and phi xo dig, all this happen in one part. So you start from this and one part in principle you should be able to convert this into natural product. So that was the key reaction which Karan has proposed. Now this compound can be easily obtained by simple homologation. So what you need is you need to add a triple bond to this. Okay? So some function group transformation followed by adding this triple bond you will get the radical cyclization precursor. The next key step is the nucleophilic attack, the nucleophilic attack of this whole unit, nucleophilic attack of this whole unit to this lactone. So now the nucleophile will attack here and the double bond will migrate and this will open up. Okay. It is like SN2 prime. Okay. So that will give you the carboxylic acid and this lactone, if you look at this lactone, whenever you see a 5 membered lactone, one reaction which should come to your mind immediately is iodo lactonization. Okay. So now you have a double bond here, so what can what one can do is after iodo lactonization you can eliminate and this can be easily obtained from this acetate through a Claisen rearrangement which I will discuss during the synthesis. Let us see how this bicyclic lactone was made. He started from commercially available 2 methyl cyclopentenone okay. and the first step was to use Lucier reduction that is sodium borohydride cerium chloride to reduce only the ketone of alpha beta and such ketone to get the cyclopentenol. So with the methyl group at 2 position. Then it treated with acetic anhydride, so which acetylated the free hydroxyl group to form the corresponding 2 methyl cyclopentenyl acetate. This on treatment with LDA and quench with TBS chloride, so you can write this compound like this. Now you see this has acidic proton, okay. you can generate anion with LDA and if you quench with TBS, TBS chloride this is what you get. Okay. So if you look at this substrate carefully, if you look at this substrate carefully, so this is having a 1,5 diene, okay. is having 1,5 diene, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when you have 1,5 diene, then that is a substrate for cope or Claisen rearrangement. Since you have oxygen part of this, so this is Claisen rearrangement. So this is easy, you can see this will undergo this 3, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement upon heating to give the corresponding rearranged product. 
gamma, delta, unsaturated ester, alpha, beta, gamma, gamma, delta. Always, you know, when you when you do such a Claisen rearrangement, you will get a gamma, delta, unsaturated system. Okay, so this upon treatment with phenyl selenyl chloride, so you, you one can think about using iodo lactonization or phenyl seleno lactonization. The phenyl seleno lactonization is slightly better than iodo lactonization just for the reason that the introduction of double bond is much easier because it can be done at 0 degree. Okay. So, that will give you the corresponding seleno lactone as you know once you have the seleno group then treatment with hydrogen peroxide at 0 degrees one can easily eliminate the phenyl selenic acid to introduce the double bond. Okay, it is a cis elim syn elimination to get the corresponding bicyclic lactone. So, the bicyclic lactone was obtained in 6 steps from commercially available 2 methyl cyclopentidone. And the next step is to make the nucleophile, okay. make the nucleophile and that should undergo SN2 prime reaction. For that, he started from again commercially available 1,3 diol okay, having a gem dimethyl group and selectively one can protect one of the alcohol because this is a symmetrical alcohol. So, you protect one of the alcohol as a corresponding THP ether. So, it is also very simple and straightforward. So, you protect this as a THP ether. Then the other alcohol you mesylate and convert that into a bromo comp. Okay. So, this is the second precursor. Okay. Now, you convert this into lithium, okay. convert this into lithium. So, one can treat with tertiary butyl lithium, I know those days he has used lithium naphthalenide to convert that into lithium, lithium derivative and now you make it as copper. So, so that you know it can undergo a SN2 prime right -like reaction to give this carboxylic acid and you also introduce this 3 carbon unit. Okay. So, next step is you have to homologate, okay. you have to introduce the triple bond, is not it? You need a triple bond here, okay. you need a triple bond here. So, that can be done before that this THP group. So, the THP group has served its purpose. So, once the protecting group served its purpose, it is better to remove. Okay. And the problem with THP group is it will give additional stereocenter. THP is nothing but if you see. So, this is THP and then you can see there is another chiral center here. So, because of this extra chiral center, okay, you will get a diastereomer, okay, you will get a mixture. So, that NMR will not be clean. So, whenever you use THP, whenever you use a THP ether and if you have a chiral center in your molecule, remove the THP as early as possible so that you will get a good spectra. Okay. So, then remove the THP and then you get the primary alcohol. Now, the free carboxylic acid can be easily reduced with LIH to get another primary alcohol. So, now if you look at this molecule, you have two primary alcohols. Okay. So, both you convert into triplate and then convert that into corresponding iodide by treating with tetrabutyl ammonium iodide. Okay. The tetrabutyl ammonium iodide converts these two into CH2I here and CH2I there. Now, what you need to do is you need to homologate here with the triple bond. Okay. Now, when you treat with TMS as clean and butyl lithium. Okay. So, this is a neopentyl system, this is a neopentyl system. So, when you had lithium trimethyl silyl acetylide, okay, the neopentyl system is not that reactive, it is very, very difficult. So, here this nucleophile can attack only at this carbon. So, what you get is the corresponding triple bond and TMS. And for the radical cyclization, you do not need this TMS. So, just to remove it with the fluoride source. 
So, cesium fluoride will remove the TMS and that sets the stage for the key radical cyclization. So, the radial radical cyclization as you can see here it undergoes a tandem phi exo trig followed by phi exo dig radical cyclization to give the natural product hirsuti. So, if you look at the overall process, the total synthesis of hirsutin was made from commercially available 2 methyl cyclopentenone and it involved 3 key reactions Gleisen rearrangement, SN2 prime substitution, and tandem radical cyclization. Okay. And the yield, overall yield for this whole sequence was close to 8 percent. And considering that it is a 14 step process, uh, 8 percent is a very, very good yield. After successfully synthesizing hirsutin, he wanted to extend this methodology to another closely related natural product called capnaline. So, if you look at capnalin and hirsutin, immediately first, first look at these two molecules, you will feel that both are same, but it is not. You need to have a closer look at this molecule. In hirsutin, you have a methyl group here, whereas you have hydrogen. In hirsutin, you have hydrogen here, you have methyl group here. In hirsutin, the dimethyl group is here, whereas dimethyl group is here at capnalin. So, there, is, there are subtle differences between these two natural products and what Karan wanted was he wanted to extend the same tandem radical cyclization to capnalin also. So, what he did? So, he also started uh, from cyclopentenone, this time he, he does not need the methyl group here and followed the same process to get this bicyclic lactone but he needs a methyl group here. Okay. So, for that first what he did, he did a 1,4 like addition with methyl magnesium bromide and coprous bromide dimethyl sulphide. So, it opened to give this carboxylic acid and then followed by hydrolactonization and elimination he could get this bicyclic lacto. Then another ring opening with this Grignard reagent and copper. So, this is commercially available, the corresponding bromide is commercially available. So, make the Grignard and add and you get this carboxylic acid. Reduce the carboxylic acid to get the corresponding primary alcohol. Then you mesylate and convert into CH2I and now based on the earlier experience you do not need even TMS acetylene, you can directly take lithium acetylide ethylene diamine complex. So, that will give you the triple bond required for the radical cyclization. Now, what we need is you have to remove this convert it into gem dimethyl group and also the halide. So, Jones oxidation uh, directly oxidize the protecting group first hydrolyze the protecting group to aldehyde and then oxidize the aldehyde to carboxylic acid and then carboxylic acid was methylated using diazomethane to get the corresponding methyl ester. Now, if you take excess methyl magnesium bromide and add to this ester, it will give corresponding tertiary alcohol. The tertiary alcohol was converted into corresponding iodide by treatment with trimethyl silyl iodide. So, that is the, that gives the key precursor for the tandem radical cyclization. So, you have the radical here. So, you can generate the radical from this iodo, iodo compound and then that will give phi xo followed by another phi xo, first one is phi xo trig, the second one is phi xo dig. So, that gave directly the natural product that is capnaline. So, again using the same radical cyclization, same tandem radical cyclization, currents group could successfully achieve the total synthesis of capnaline and here they started from the commercially available cyclopentenone, 2 cyclopentenone and not with methyl group and overall yield was almost same as in the case of hirsutin. The total number of steps was 14 steps and with an overall yield of 8 percent. So, we will continue our discussion on the radical cyclization, um, how this radical cyclization has been successfully used in the synthesis of more uh, triquinanes in the next lecture. Thank you.